Hi, and once again welcome to Warsaw. After my recent video on the quickly expanding metro, we now take a look at another mode in Warsaw's public transport system, the Warsaw Tram. Let's dive in. For the history of the trams in Warsaw, we go back to the 11th of December in 1866, with the introduction of the first Holstrom tram line. This line was introduced to connect Warsaw's downtown station, back then still called Viedenski, with the current Vilenski and Wschotny stations, which were back then still called Peterbuski and Terespolski. With the help of Belgian capital, the network extended to around 30 kilometers. By 1903, the idea to shift to electric trams came around which became a fact in 1908. After World War I, Poland became an independent country again, after more than a century. In the period up to World War II, the network saw another large expansion, but then a dark age for Poland arrived. After the first months of invasion and occupation, when tram traffic was completely halted, tram traffic gradually returned. However, the very brave 1944 Warsaw Uprising saw Warsaw being bombed and this utter destruction also destroyed the tram system. When the war finally came to an end, an effort to rebuild Warsaw, as well as bringing back the tram system, was started. The tram system was rebuilt rather quickly, but not exactly in the same way as it was done before. You see, when Warsaw opened its first tram lines, it did so using Russian gauge. As between 1795 and 1918, this part of Poland was dominated by the Imperial Russian Aligned Kingdoms. The fact that the network basically needed to be rebuilt from scratch allowed for a shift to 1435mm standard gauge. In 1946 the first standard gauge line was launched, and in 1950 the whole operation of regaging was completed. Since Warsaw had to wait till after communism fell before the first metro line was opened, the tram has been the backbone of its public transport in the years under communist rule. The network was expanded throughout the 50s and the 60s, especially to new housing and industrial areas. In the later decades of communist rule, buses were chosen more often to connect new areas. In 1974, there were more bus passengers than tram passengers for the first time in Warsaw's history. After the fall of communism, the trams initially received little investment. But as of 2005 up until the present day, the trams seem to modernize as quickly as the city does. New trams and new lines allowed for the transformation it needed. And this brings us to the network of today. This is the current tram network of Warsaw. It has a 1435mm standard gauge. The network is estimated to be around 127 kilometers, although the real figure is slightly murky. The annual report of Warsaw's tram system says it is 305 kilometers, but it is calculated as the amount of single track, while most of the network is double track. Also, it likely includes depots. 127 kilometers seems to be the closest estimate, but if you know the real figure, please let me know in the comments below. Besides that, the trams are powered by 600 volts DC overhead wires and there are currently 4 depots on the network, although a fifth one is going to be constructed. On the screen you have likely seen pop up also all the names of all the termini. These are the ones that currently see operation. However, there are still some bell and loops across the network, which allows for some flexibility in case there is some issue. And now let's see which routes are operated. However, please take in mind that this was recorded in January 2023, and is subject to change. As per usual, we start off with line 1, Anopo Banacha. Followed by line 2, Metro Mocine to Vinica. Line 3, Anopo Gotswavek. 
Line 4, Sherein Schotni to Vizchigi. Line 6, Metro Mochine to Gotswavek. Line 7, from the park and ride Alea Krakowska to Kavinchinska Basilica. Line 9 starts also at the park and ride of Alea Krakowska and ends in Gotswavek. Line 11, from Nove Bemovo to Placna Rutovica. Line 13, from Schmentars Volski to Kavinchinska Basilica. Line 15, from Marimont Potok to Park and Ride Alea Krakowska. Line 17, from Vinitsa to PKP Suziewiec. Line 20, from Bernerovo to Zerain FSO. Line 22, Piaski to Vyatrachna. Line 23, Nove Bemovo to Cinchova. Line 24, Nove Bemovo to Gotswavek. Line 25, Anopol Banacha. Line 26, Metro Mochine to Vyatrachna. Line 27, Metro Marimont to Schmentarswolski. Line 28, Osiedle Gurczewska to Dwozhets Schotny. Line 31, Pekape Suziewiec to Dworkova. Line 33, Metro Mochine to Kieletska. Line 35, Nove Bemovo to Banacha. Line 75, Dworkova Vistigi. And finally, we arrive at line 78. Osiedle Kurczewska to Zerain FSO. And now let's see what kind of vehicles are used on the network. Like the Czech Republic, Poland has a lot of locally produced trams as well. In Warsaw, most of the modern trams are made by PESA, but there are still lots of trams of Konstal driving around. As per usual, I will only discuss trams in day-to-day -day operation. The oldest type still in operation is the 105NA, made by Konstal. A single unit can carry up to 125 passengers, but they are often operated in pairs. The first 105 NAs arrived in 1975. There are also some 105 NAs with a new look, which are named the 105 NKs. Later on, the last type of fully high floor trams that arrived to Warsaw were the 123 Ns. They were produced by FPS Poznan between 2006 and 2007. There is one 112 NA in the fleet, which is a two-section partially low floor type, produced by Konstal. It was produced in 1995. Slightly later, the 116 NAs came in as a three-section partially low floor tram. They are much more numerous than the 112 NA, with 29 units. From 2005, the first fully low floor tram that joined the fleet was the 120N. This was also the first tram made by PESA to join. There are 15 units of this type in Warsaw. The 120NA, also known as the PESA Swing, is a very common type in Warsaw. With 186 units built, it is perhaps the tram that you will see most in Warsaw, since the other most common type, the 105NAs, are mostly operated in pairs. Of the 186 PESA Swings, there are 6 bi-directional trams. The benefit of the bi-directional trams is that they can be operated during construction works or partially finished lines. And from swinging, we continue with the Jazz Duo. This model of PESA, designated as 128N, joined in 2014, and all of these are bi-directional. Also named Jazz, a shorter three-section tram of PESA, designated as 134N, is mostly operated on the less busy lines. And to finish this oversight of the fleet, there is the 140N, 141N and 142N of Hyundai Rotem. These are the only types of the fleet that are not produced in Poland, but in South Korea, although with the use of Polish components. The designations differ due to some details. The 141Ns are bi-directional 5-section trams, and most numerous with 85 units ordered. These were also delivered as the first trams. The 141N is unidirectional with 5 sections, and 18 units on order. Of these, 20 trams are about to join the fleet. All trams from Hyundai are supposed to be delivered by 2023, according to Warsaw's tram company. The trams of Hyundai Rotem have the nickname Vasolino. 
And that brings us to the users of this network. Over the course of 2021, 186 million passengers used the network. Of course, this year was still impacted by the pandemic, and therefore riderships were a bit lower. Nevertheless, the ridership was still half a million passengers per day. Although, for comparison reasons, I also included the numbers of 2019. In this year, 296 million passengers used the network, which amounts to 811,000 passengers a day. 2022 most likely has seen a rise in the passenger figures compared to 2021. However, the annual report of this year is still not out. Currently, there are two extensions in the works. The smaller one is the short extension along Kasprzaka Street, which branches off after the stop Reduta Volska and meeting existing tracks again at Spital Volski. This 2.3 km extension is currently under construction, but the project also includes a 1.3 km modernization of the tracks. It is meant to provide a shortcut from the Vola district to the center. On top of that, there may be an extension from this new section towards Warsaw's West Station. But let's see what the future brings on that one. The second extension is much more extensive. It is going to serve a district which did not see any tram connection so far, Vilanov. On its route to Vilanov, two branches are planned, of which one is supposed to serve the Stegne district. And the other one will follow Gagarina Street for a short bit. The section towards Villanov and Stegny is 7.4 km long, while the branch on Gagarina Street is 1 km. Due to the works on this extension, some current tramlines are rerouted or cut short, as the regular section between Dvorkova and Plaza Bavicella is involved in this works. Besides these extensions, there is also a fifth depot in the works. This depot is located at Anopol and will have a capacity for 152 trams. Much needed due to the arrival of the new trams. Fleet-wise, the Vasolino trams of Hyundai should be delivered throughout the remainder of this year. And on that note, we have reached the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this overview on the Warsaw Tram Network. I think this network has seen a lot of progress over the years. And I hope it will continue growing and modernizing. If you'd like to see more of my work in the future, please subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you very much for watching.